Yo, what is up you guys? This is Godson and welcome to Clash Royale. Check it out you guys. I am playing this new game by Supercell and you guys I'm gonna be showing you some gameplay footage of how I'm playing the game. Uh, if you've seen other videos of it then you'll know basically the gist of the game but I'll go ahead and explain some in case you are new and you're on my channel and you haven't seen any videos of this stuff. So if I could label this game I would say it is a tower defense slash card game. You use cards and you uh, put them into the field and they turn into actual troops. The troops are Clash of Clans troops. Well, not all of them actually. If you can tell, we have some troops that resemble dragons and knights. I would say that's more of like a medieval era that they went for, which is fine. Uh, Clash of Clans does fit that medieval type of feel. And so adding these characters kind of feels like it fits into the mold. So you guys, with this game, I was actually pretty excited to play this because it is tons of fun. Unlike many card games that you play, uh, they just have the cards hit each other and there's no really good animation. With this one, when you deploy the cards, uh, the characters will come out and you can see them in full animation attacking each other and I just think that is such an awesome aspect to have in a game like this. And you guys, it's not because this is a new Super Soul game uh, that I'm covering this. In fact, there are other Super Soul games out right now that I could play. But this one fits more of my style. I mean, we have Boom Beach, we have Heyday, but I just feel this is more of like a game I can pick up and play and I don't have to like invest tons of hours into upgrading and doing all these things because Clash of Clans takes all my energy. And with this one, I feel you can just pick it up and go. You don't have to wait, you know, for your troops to train up. They're card based and you can just rank them up that way and fight other people. So you guys, I'm going to go over some of the gist of the game in case... Uh, you haven't been following along with the gameplay. If you notice, we have our meat shields. Mine is the knight and his is the giant. And the gameplay pretty much centers around that. By having your meat shield, you can put whatever troops that are in your cards behind them. So since he has a wall breaker, that does splash damage. So any troops that are in front of the giant, the wall breaker could splash them. If the health points are not that high, then they will die in one hit. Uh, behind my giant up there is the musketeer. She does really good range damage. So she can take out air troops, and she does good damage because she has a gun. Uh, but now they, uh, the musketeer died, and I have the witch. The witch deploys skeletons, and she can also fight air troops as well. There's lots of strategies. Oh my gosh, you guys. There's so much strategies with this game. Uh, but if you can tell, I'm pushing really hard to get to his tower because he has two of my towers down, and if the timer ends, then he wins. So we're right now, we're running for the race. We're racing to the end, and I'm able to clutch it out and take down his main tower where the king is. And that gives me the victory, you guys. If you can take out their king, then the game is over. Or whoever has the most towers destroyed will win as well. But if you guys are at a stalemate and nothing has been destroyed, then it will go into overtime, and you guys will be fighting still uh, until someone destroys a tower. If nothing happens, then it'll just be a draw, and you both get nothing. So you guys, on to round two. Now I explained about the meat shield, however, you don't really have to go that route. You do have some troops that do enough damage by themselves. Uh, the Prince and the Musketeer, as you can see, they are in the enemy card deck. If he was to deploy those and I don't stop them, then they could take out a tower by themselves. So I would have to counter that with something to distract them and get them away from my towers. Uh, the Giants are good troops because they go for the towers only. They don't care if there's another troop on the field, they won't attack it. Everyone else, it seems like, will attack different troops unless they're dedicated to going to towers. Uh, so for example, giants, hog riders, and other certain troops will only go for towers. So you can use that to your advantage by coming up with a strategy and seeing what card combinations work well with the other. Uh, some troops, actually, you don't even need big troops in the game. You could have tons of smaller troops that only cost two elixir, two or three elixir, and then just flood the enemy team with troops. If they don't have anything to counter that, then that's a good mechanism you could use uh, to win that way. Or if you want to use the big troops, you just got to back them up with troops that complement that card. And of course, you can't just use the same troop over and over again because the cards rotate. And uh, just by using all the best cards anyways, they cost a lot of elixir, and you have to kind of strategize it and make sure that when you start pushing the other tower that you have enough elixir and the right cards to do the job. So if you notice, he's gonna distract my witch and wall breaker with his knight. The knight is a really cool character because it has a lot of hit points and he can duke it out for a while while his tower is helping him. So although the knight is a good character, he has a lot of health points and he does good damage. He can only attack one troop at a time, so that's his weakness. So lots of little troops can get around him and distract him enough so that he gets taken out. 
Uh, but you guys, he doesn't have the most health points in the game. In fact, the Giants have the most, not as the top character, but they have the most at a smaller level. Right now, they're perfect for a lower level where I'm at, and you can use those to your advantage. So until you can unlock better troops that are stronger and have more health points and more attack damage, then you just have these start out characters. The Witch, however, is an epic character that I got, and you can get, get epic characters like this by uh, doing tons of battles and getting your experience points up and getting a chest. You can get chests actually by just hanging out long enough in the game so that the timer goes down and then you get a free one, or by playing enough, they give you one for a certain amount of battles that you do. So you guys, now that the timer is almost done, the elixir is pushed to double, so that means you can put more troops out on the field and push your way to victory. That's when it gets really interesting because you have to play faster and uh, strategy really comes down to how, play, how good you are at playing at a faster pace. So as you can see right now, the game is pretty much tied up. We both have two towers left on both sides. So it goes to sudden death and we have a minute left to push to the next tower. Now the smaller towers have lower health points, so that means they get taken down faster. So you have to kind of decide for yourself which is smarter to go for the smaller tower or risk going for the bigger tower and going for the win, uh, just in case it's both tied. So you guys, whoever gets the next tower will be the winner, and since I have such a lot of troops on the field, he has to focus on which team uh, he wants to attack. But since my knight is over there doing work on his tower, that gets me the victory, and I'm able to clutch it out for two towers and an automatic win. So you guys, that is Clash Royale. The game's not out yet, but it will be out globally very soon, so I'll be covering it for you guys. So thank you so much. This is Godson, and I will see you next time. Godson out.